Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you appreciate content like this. Now, the Ducati Multistrada. The Multistrada has always been synonymous with a motorcycle that combines tremendous performance, practicality, and comfort all into one bike. With the introduction of the Multistrada V4, like you see here, Ducati has brought this bike to the next level of performance and technology. It's also one of the most expensive new motorcycles on sale today, with this bike as pictured coming in somewhere north of $27,000 US. The question we have to answer today is, is it worth the price? So here's what you can expect in today's review. Now first, if you haven't checked out my video where my friend Brandon and I take this bike along with my R1250 GS through the California desert on an epic road trip comparison, I suggest you might wanna check that video out as we show this bike riding in all sorts of various interesting conditions. Now, since we've already done that sort of long ride video with all the riding footage, today's video is gonna cover more of the technical aspects. So I'll start off by showing you the riding position and the seat height. We'll get my wife on board and show you how the accommodations are for the passenger. We're gonna take a tour around the bike, talk about the specs, show you all the cool features and technology that the bike has. We're also gonna talk about the maintenance requirements on this bike. Then we'll move on and we'll talk about the pros and cons to this model as I see it. We'll talk about the competitors to this bike and then we'll have some final thoughts. All right, so let's cover the models and the pricing for the Ducati Multistrada range and see where this V4S fits in. So the Multistrada, it can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of options available and Ducati has really changed this recently. So if we look at the Multistrada range overall, you start with the Multistrada V2. Now that's based on their Testa Strata uh, smaller engine. It's around 937 cc's. That bike is still using the Desmo valve train and that bike puts out around 113 horsepower. Now we should note that the Multistrada, the V-twin or L-twin Multistradas, the 1200s and the 1260s with the twin cylinder engines, those models are actually gone and replaced by the V4 models using the new Gran Turismo engine. Next in the lineup, you have the base Multistrada V4 coming in around $21,000, although I'm not sure Ducati's still building or delivering those uh, because I don't tend to see many of those out there, but they're still listed on the website. That brings us then to this model you see here, which is the V4S with the travel and radar package. So what Ducati tells me is that this is the model that really they're producing if you get a V4. So it, the travel and radar means you've got the blind spot monitors, you've got the adaptive cruise control, so your front and rear radar. Uh, travel means you've got things like a center stand, hard bags, you've got heated grips, electronic suspension, um, all the sorts of goodies that you would expect. That comes on this bike, and this bike comes comes in around $27,000. Now keep in mind that price does not include added accessories. You see like the engine bars and the skid plate, which are optional extras fitted to this bike. I also wanna note that you can spec your Multistrada V4 with either spoked wheels like this bike has, or you can get cast aluminum wheels. Now to make things even more confusing and go on further, you can get the V4 Multistrada in the Pikes Peak Edition. The Pikes Peak changes the 19 inch front wheel for a 17 inch front wheel. So for sport bike enthusiasts or people who are really focused on the most road performance you can get or maybe wanna take their Multistrada to the track, you can get that Pikes Peak model and that bike comes in closer to the 29 or $30,000 price point. And finally, to wrap this up, Ducati has also announced a V4 Rally. So the Rally Edition seems to be aimed squarely at BMW's GS Adventure model, and the Rally is gonna have a larger 30 liter or almost eight gallon fuel tank. It's gonna have a little bit more wind protection. It's gonna have more ground clearance, longer suspension travel, and some other features. And that bike is gonna be coming in around the $30,000 mark. All right, seat height and seating position on the Multistrada V4. So your seat height is uh, adjustable between 33 and 34 inches or 840 to 860 millimeters. Uh, now the seating position, let me jump on and show you here. 
So we'll show the riding position first because um, I'm on the center stand. So you can see here, there's just the tiniest lean forward to the bars, but it's extremely comfortable um, for riding all day, which, which we've tested, no complaints there. And then if I pop the bike off the center stand, there we go. <laughs> you can see that it's, um, so I am uh, five foot uh, 11, about 100 and, uh, 80 centimeters tall or about 71 inches tall. I have a 32 inch leg and seam. I weigh about 200 pounds or 90 kilograms. And I can flat foot this bike on both sides. I do have the preload in that minimum setting. So it reduces that down, which is nice. Kind of like the Harley Davidson Pan America does. Um, and pretty easy to reach the ground here. The bike also doesn't feel heavy or top heavy. They've done an amazing job centralizing the mass of the engine and the fuel down here. Um, so it doesn't feel like a 530 pound or 230 kilogram motorcycle at all. All right, so a huge thanks to my wife Maggie for braving the extremely cold weather, even when she's sick, to come out here and help me uh, show you the riding position. So I'm gonna jump on and then I'm gonna have her jump on as a passenger to kind of um, have her see how much room there is. Okay, so why don't you get on now? Okay. Wait, is this thing supposed to be down? Oh yeah, let's oh, put the foot pegs okay. down. Okay. Always put the foot pegs down for your wife. There's a tip for you husbands out there. Okay. Aren't you impressed that I realized it wasn't on? Yes, very impressed. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, this is really comfy. Oh, well, that's good that you say that. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be comfortable for two people, so that's a good thing. Yes. So you have handholds? Yes. And you feel like you have a comfortable seat? Yes. Okay, and you got enough room? I think so. Now put your arms around my waist, see mm -hmm. how that is. Okay, and I, I don't feel cramped at all. I feel like you're, there's plenty of room between us. So I think this would be a really good bike for two up riding, especially if you had like a backrest, uh, back, a top box for the passenger, I think, too. So, um, okay, why don't you get off, sweet? Okay. Just curious, are these stock or you have to pay No, those extra? are factory. Yeah, oh, they come wow. with the bike, yeah. Okay, hang on. But this bike costs $27,000. Are you going to buy me one for Christmas? Oh, um, hmm. I think I'm going to pass, but oh, hang on, okay. hang on, hang on. Okay, I think I get off. What are you doing? I couldn't get off. Oh. I'm frozen. Okay, okay so, so I'm good. Frozen wife, we're going to send her back inside. <laughs> okay, thanks, Maggie. Okay, no problem. Bye-bye, guys. All right, let's cover the main specs of the Multistrada V4S travel and radar, and then we'll take a walk around and show you all the cool features of the bike, including all the amazing technology. So first of all, Ducati has a really amazing uh, brochure on this bike that you can download from their website. I'll link it below. And if you're considering purchasing one of these, I might suggest you look at that. They give you a lot of technical information on everything from the engine to the technology, the chassis and everything like that. Um, so I'll link that here below. Uh, so let's get into the specs. So the bike's weight, the bike is pretty lightweight in the category if you consider the technology, the equipment that it has and the amount of power. It weighs 530 pounds fully fueled up or about 240 kilograms. Let's talk about the engine. So the engine is their Gran Turismo V4 engine and it displaces 1158cc. Uh, it's obviously liquid cooled. It's a 90 degree V4 engine. In terms of power and torque, you're looking at 170 horsepower or 125 kilowatts at 10,500 RPM. Torque, you're looking at 92 foot-pounds of torque or 125 Newton meters coming in at 8,750 RPM. It's a 14.1 to 14 to 1, excuse me, compression ratio engine. So you definitely need to use premium fuel as that's one of the highest compression ratios I've seen on a modern motorcycle. It also bears mentioning, and I've covered this in other parts of the video, that this bike, this engine, does not use Desmo valve trains. So by getting away from the Desmodronic and going to spring actuated valves, they've reduced the maintenance requirements. And by doing that, reduce the maintenance cost. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, of course, that engine is hooked up to a six-speed manual transmission with a hydraulically actuated slipper assist clutch, and there is a quick shifter included. Front suspension, you have 50 millimeter fork. It's electronically controlled. It's Ducati Skyhook suspension system. Very, very effective, uh, very technological system. You've got 6.7 inches or 170 millimeters of travel. Rear suspension, you can see here, is a monoshock. It's uh, electronically controlled with that electronic 
preload, which you can set to automatic, or you can set to the minimum preload mode, which we'll show here soon. And it has 7.1 inches or 180 millimeters of travel. In terms of damping adjustments, that's done electronically through the different riding modes and through the setup on the TFT screen. So let's talk about tires and wheels. So my test bike has the optional spoked wheels, which are tubeless. Now you can get this bike with cast wheels. And to be honest, if I was buying one of these, I would get the cast wheels as they're easier to clean and less maintenance. But for if you're gonna be doing more off-roading, I suppose you might want these spoke wheels. So the front tire is a 120-70-19. And the rear tire coming around back here is a 170-60-17. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, Ducati does offer this bike in a Pikes Peak edition. And if you get the Pikes Peak, you do away with that 19 inch front wheel and you swap it out for a 17 inch front wheel. Let's look at the brakes. So Ducati are known for amazing brakes. This bike is no exception. You have dual 320 millimeter discs up front and you have these four piston Brembo calipers on each side. And of course it's all hooked up to the bike's six axis IMU with cornering ABS. Here's a look at the rear brake. The rear brake is a 265 millimeter disc with a two piston caliper. Um, however, I will talk about that in other, in, uh, in other portions of this review and my other video about the bike. The rear brake feels very mushy and soft and it's actually kind of hard to activate, which is a very strange thing. We should talk about the fuel capacity and the fuel range. So this bike has a 22 liter or 5.8 gallon fuel tank. Now the range obviously depends on how fast and how hard you ride, but I found in my extensive testing of this bike that I usually average around between 38 to 42 miles a gallon, giving me a range of around 200 miles, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. But again, it's gonna depend on how fast you ride. And at higher speeds or harder acceleration, this V4 engine can really drink a lot of fuel. However, I found that by riding more conservatively, you can get those better figures and the range isn't as bad as some people have said. All right, let's briefly talk about maintenance on the Multistrada. So as we've mentioned, Ducati have changed things up a little bit with this bike to make it lower maintenance. So let's start with the oil changes. So oil and filter changes, Ducati wants you to do that every two years or 15,000 kilometers or about 9,000 miles. So it's a pretty long oil change interval for a motorcycle, but keep in mind, modern motorcycle oils have gotten pretty amazing and the engines have tighter tolerances. So you're able to go those longer intervals. Now, in terms of major servicing for the engine, so this is where the big difference comes into typical Ducatis with the decimal valve train. So because this has the spring actuated valves, more traditional uh, valve train, they were able to engineer it in a way where you don't have to have the valves inspected uh, until 60,000 kilometers or about 36,000 miles. That's amazing. That's um, double or triple the interval that you might see on a lot of other motorcycles or specifically even bikes with the decimal valve train. So this is going to cut down on your servicing time, time in the shop, and also your servicing costs. Other things you should, we should talk about, uh, the air filter, obviously, you're probably not going to ride this bike off-road a lot, so I don't think you're going to have to get to the air filter that often. Uh, the chain, the chain, yeah, you're going to have to maintain the chain depending on how much you want to maintain it. That's pretty easy to do. I guess overall what I would say about maintenance on a Ducati is, I'm not picking on Ducati here, but I've shown in the Desert X video and, and substantiated this that Ducati's really not a company that's um, very supportive of owner maintenance. They really want you to go to the dealership to have maintenance items done. Um, and that's something you have to keep in mind. That's sort of their attitude as a company. It's very difficult or impossible to get service manuals. So if you're a very hands-on kind of owner, owning a, Duc a modern day Ducati could be a little challenging for you. All right, let's take a quick tour around the bike, starting at the front. Now, let me qu uh, first show you the lighting. So this is the daytime running light that you have, kind of a cool signature lighting element. Now, if I turn on the motorcycle, so there's your low beam headlight. And there's your high beam headlight. Finishing up the lighting, the turn signals you can see here are integrated into the front bodywork, which I think is a beautiful, sleek, modern design. Rear turn signals are LED, and you can see them there. And then that's your real tail light, tail light and brake light, which is pretty large and pretty bright. 
Continuing our tour, starting at the front, you've got this kind of signature front beak. Up here in the front, I'd be remiss not to mention, this is the front radar element, which uh, allows the bike to have radar adaptive cruise control, which we'll cover in other portions of this review, and also featured in my uh, video comparing this bike to the GS, the road trip that we took the bike on. You can see the lower front fender, suspension, brakes, tires, wheels. We've talked about all that already. You can see, I think this is an oil cooler, and then you've got these radiators here kind of tucked under on each side. This bike has an accessory engine bar or crash bar. This is not a factory item. You will have to pay extra if you want that. You can see the ex exhaust exiting out here. This bike also has the Ducati accessory skid plate, which is an optional extra. Again, you're not getting that. Uh, from the factory that is something you have to pay extra for. We can see the sides of the engine casing here. You can see the side exit radiator fan. I didn't notice much engine heat on this bike, but it's not summer. So take that with a grain of salt. Continuing to work our way around the sides, you can see the side fairings, these kind of inlet scoops here that look really cool, almost like something you'd see maybe on an airplane. We'll cover the controls as a separate, as a separate segment. Um, you can see the brake lever here foot peg, passenger foot pegs. Everything feels very high quality. You can see the bolt-on rear subframe, bolt-on passenger pegs there. Um, check your oil there, rear brake reservoir there. Some plastic um, things here, which looks like have been making contact with the boots, exhaust shield, the luggage, which I'll cover again as a separate segment. Uh, underneath the luggage, you have a very slim uh, silencer, which is very nice to see. It doesn't look too big, heavy, or bulky. Taking a look at the seating, um, both Brandon and I, both of us who tested this bike extensively, found the seating to be extremely comfortable for a stock seat. And the seats are heated front and back. This is the switch for the uh, seating or the heating on the rear seat so that the passenger can control it on his or her own. Rear grab handles, rear rack, where you can attach top box attachments and things like that. We've talked about the lighting already. One thing I didn't mention is the license plate light sticks out here to the side. Kind of interesting, I haven't always seen that before. Down here, we can see the chain drive. You can see other components of the bike down here. You can kind of see, uh, that's probably the catalytic converter down in there. Don't want to touch that, that's hot. Center stand. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? And you can see here they label engine V4 Gran Turismo. So we don't confuse it with the lowly V2 model for peasants. This is the rich person V4 Gran Turismo. Kind of doing this a little bit out of order, so I apologize. So you can see the windshield. You've got these side deflectors here, which are standard as part of the bike, which help push the, the wind out that way. And then you can see you've got an adjustable windshield here. Now this bike has the lower or the sport windshield, which is smaller than factory. You can see here in the low position, the factory windshield is wider and taller. And we didn't really like this on our test. We really wish we had the factory windshield. Um, but to adjust it, it's a very simple mechanism. Pull up, pull and push to push it up and down. I like that a lot. That's very easy to use and seems like something that's not gonna break or, or get fouled up over time. Now the hand guards, this bike does have accessory um, hand guards which have more protection. They have part metal and part plastic. These really remind me of the hand guards that we had on the Desert X test bike. Um, personally, I'm not really a fan of that design. I feel like this plastic piece is likely to break uh, if you drop the bike or crash it under normal circumstances but there's probably reasons why they have to do it that way. Here you can see behind, the, the hand guards do offer really good wind protection though to keep your hands warm in the winter. The mirrors, that's the blind spot indication there lighting up as I power the bike on. The mirrors are um, very nice high quality with the blind spot indicators. We did find that the mirrors buzz quite a bit due to the engine uh, buzz. Um, but we talked about that in the other video. Let's continue our tour, uh, do the controls and gas cap, and then we'll go to the TFT and luggage kind of last. So adjustable brake and clutch levers, of course, very long levers too, I noticed that. Um, very high-end looking kind of components here. Uh, switch gear is really good and it is backlit, so it's lit up at night, which I really appreciate. Uh, hazard lights, uh, high beam lighting, suspension. And it should be noted that if you hold this down, you can go into minimum preload mode. What that'll do is if you hold that down, go into minimum, uh, at lower speeds, the preload will go to its minimum setting, allowing you to reach the ground easier. So, and at high speeds, it raises back up to the proper height, depending on the load that the bike senses. So great feature to have, kind of similar to Harley's adaptive ride height, just works a little bit differently. Ride, button, ride uh, mode button, plus and minus switch. Uh, these uh, work depending on what you've got selected in the TFT, but things like setting the distance on the adaptive cruise control. 
Uh, this is a four-way selector menu switch, turn signal, a cruise control switch, which works very well. Over here, you've got a uh, heated grip switch up here on the top, and you've got the typical Ducati, what they're using nowadays for their start and stop switch, which I like, and a light switch here, which I believe only functions in certain countries to maybe turn off the daytime running light or turn the low beam on and off. It doesn't seem to do anything on this particular bike. The ignition on this bike is a twist to go like this, so it is keyless. Now, I've got the key stored in here, so this is the phone compartment, which actually doesn't fit my phone. And I'll show you that right now. So I have a Galaxy S22 uh, and there's no, in a pretty slim case, and there's no way that I'm jamming that in there. It's stuck right there. So I found this to be true with the BMWs too, who have a phone compartment. They just never seem to make them big enough. I suppose if you had a smaller phone, it would fit. There is a USB compartment here. Ducati intends you to put your phone in here, plug it in to charge it, waterproof cover there, very nice, and then have it connected into the bike for the infotainment uh, navigation phone control system. So while we're here, we should look at the gas cap. The gas cap, interestingly enough, unlike the BMWs where if you have the keyless ride ignition, and on the BMWs you have keyless gas cap, on the Ducati, you have to put the key in to get to the, to get to the gas. Now, maybe that's a safety feature, so if your key is dead or something that you can still get gas, I'm not really sure. But I thought that was a little bit interesting and something to note. Also interesting, also interesting to note on the key is it kind of has like three positions. You can retract it, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. You retract it all the way in like this, or it goes all the way out, or it has a position where it kind of locks like this. So that's just something interesting to note. All right, let me show you the TFT and how the electronics work on here. I'm not gonna take a deep dive on the infotainment part portion because that's a whole nother video. It would take forever to do. So when you power the bike up, what you're gonna see is your blind spots kind of light up. Then you've got Multistrada V4 shows up on the screen. Uh, disregard that, I have low fuel because we just got back from our trip the other day. So the main TFT screen, you're gonna operate it um, with this four-way controller with a push to enter function. So the screen, let me go through what the screen's showing you here first. You've, up here, I've got fuel range. It's showing that because the fuel is low. Phone connection status, phone battery, phone reception. You've got a top menu screen uh, where you can go through and configure different items. You can also control your Ducati Connect app and your uh, heated seat is also controlled through this upper menu. To move the control down to the lower menu, what you do is you hold this up or down and you can see how we're toggling between these two functions. So now I'm on the lower uh, info readout and you can customize what you want to see also in these, uh, in these little uh, sections by going into the settings, but we're not going to go do that. You can scroll through here and you can see different uh, consumption, average speed, trip time, instant consumption. Um, we've got that set up with these things. Again, you can configure a lot of that. Down here, you've got air temperature. You've got an ice warning because it's freezing out here right now. <laughs> uh, the riding mode, so you can see we're in touring mode. To change riding modes on this bike, it's as simple as hitting the mode button here, and then going up and down to select the mode you want. And you can see in the writing modes, it'll show you what the settings are in that mode. So the engine throttle response and power. Uh, so in touring mode, and you've got medium throttle response in uh, traction control setting, ABS setting, wheelie control, suspension damping settings, preload setting, quick shifter. You can configure these things and you can, they're also gonna be different in a different mode. So obviously Enduro has a different set of stuff. Urban has a different set. Sport moves the throttle response higher, different settings. Again, you can configure a lot of this um, how you want. To exit that, you hold the left button to go back. Moving on here, you can see this is the preload indication. So I have it set on minimum. So what that means is that, so what you do is you hold down the suspension button. So now it's toggled back to auto, but if I put it back into minimum, what it's gonna do at low speeds is lower it all the way down so that when you come to a stop, it's easier to reach the ground. You've got this large tachometer. I should also mention that the screen is very contrasty, very big, very bright. I really, it's one of the best TFTs in the business. It's truly excellent. Uh, gear position indicator, then you've got the, your sort of uh, ride settings here, quick shifter, tractional, ABS, wheel of control, it shows you what the settings are in. Temperature down here, clock up here at the top, and I think that's about 
about it for there. Now, again, I'm not going to show you all the Ducati Connect stuff, but I'll put a little video or a picture of that here. What you can do is you pair it with your phone, and I've played with it. You go and you get the Ducati Connect app, and you get the Sigic Navigation app. So they're using Sigic um, for their navigation. You can connect and you can put navigation on the screen. You can control phone calls, do things like that, and it seems to work pretty well. There might be some bugs with the navigation that, that I've seen and some other people have reported. I don't know how many people are going to use that. Um, but overall, it seems to be a pretty well thought out system. All right, it's time I show you the hard bag. So the V4Ss are coming with a travel and radar package. That's what Ducati says they're all really being equipped with now, at least here in the USA. And you get these plastic painted hard bags. Now, you can opt to get a metal, more adventure touring style cases if you don't want the plastic bags. So we mentioned in uh, our trip review that the obviously the cutout for the exhaust takes away quite a bit of the capacity on this right side. You can see that here. So to get into the bags, what you do is you have to put the key in, turn that, then you lift this handle, lift that up, and then the bags will open. And of course they have a catch here and you can see that reduced capacity in this side bag, but you can stuff stuff back in here and you have a retention system there as well. Now, if you wanna remove the bag from the bike, what you do is get that closed. You lift this up. There's this little tab that says pull. So you lift that up. Then the bag simply lifts off the bike. That's the beauty of this kind of luggage. And then you can see here the bike's exhaust and the hangers for the luggage. The nice thing about a plastic case like this is you don't have any metal exoskeleton that uh, would remain on the bike affecting the aesthetics. Then to put the bag back on, again, I'm doing this one-handed because I'm holding my camera, but I can actually do it. It's that easy to do. This goes down. So to put it back into place, you just simply reverse that process, push this handle back down, and then everything's locked and ready to go. Now, one thing that we did notice, um, you see how the bags do this? Some people have complained about that, but that's intentional. The reason that the bag has that is for high speed riding and winds and stuff, buffeting. Um, you, the, the bags or Ducati's engineers determined that for aerodynamic and stability reasons, this play needed to be here so that the bike's not unstable at those high speeds when you have luggage. So that's the explanation for that. And it's not the only motorcycle I've seen do that. I've seen other models from other brands that do the same exact thing for the same reason. All right, so before I die of hypothermia out here, let's briefly cover the competition to the multi V4. So uh, the way I look at it, there's really uh, five motorcycles in this super high-end premium big bore adventure bike category. So that's gonna be this Multistrada. You've got BMW's R1250 GS and GS Adventure. You've got the Harley Davidson Pan America. You've got the Triumph Tiger 1200 range. You've got the KTM 1290 Adventure, the Standard One and the Adventure R. So choosing a bike in this category is really, really tough because they're all amazing bikes at the top of their game. And I've tested all of them except for the KTM 1290, which I haven't been able to get yet for test, which hopefully I will soon. Now, when you're choosing a bike in this category, you're gonna to have to consider a lot of things. Do you have a preferred brand preference? Do you have dealerships nearby? Uh, do you have friends that ride certain models that you wanna sort of go with what your friends ride? What bike appeals to you in terms of the styling? Uh, if technology is really, really important to you, if you want the adaptive cruise, then of course this bike right now is the only one that has it. How much do you wanna go off-road versus street? Um, those types of things are all things you're gonna to need to consider. The bikes also have different warranties. Some have better warranties than others. They have different financing programs. So there's a lot of things you're gonna consider, but they're all incredible motorcycles in this category. But let me kind of break down each bike just a little bit to give you a little bit of glimpse of how I feel about them. So the 1250 GS, I own one. I've owned a lot of GSs. They're a good all around motorcycle. They have some unique things, the boxer engine, the tail lever suspension, they've got shaft drive. I think that they're the best long distance touring bike among the group that I've mentioned. Most comfortable, most refined, really well dialed in and pretty good off-road as well. The KTM 1290, even though I haven't really fully tested that bike yet, that bike, uh, especially if you get the R variant, is gonna be the best off-road bike in this group, hands down. I mean, 21 inch front wheel, really good suspension. KTM is an off-road company, or at least they have been in the past, and they're really, really good at that. So if you're an off-road charger, you're probably gonna wanna look at that KTM. Also, I've heard the engine is quite incredible on that bike and almost as powerful as this. 
The Harley Davidson Pan America has some unique features. It's a, it's different. I'll just say that it's different than these other bikes. It's a good option to have. That's something a bit different. And of course, you're getting an American company if that's important to you. Check out my full review on that bike if you're more interested. Now the Tiger 1200 range, I've tested all of those. I have a buyer's guide. I have all sorts of videos, comparisons on that bike. So go check those out. I'll link some of that below. The Tigers are very, very good, very competitive, a good all around bike. Uh, we don't know how the resale value is gonna be. We don't know the reliability, but of course those are all question marks when you have a new model, even with this, I suppose. But you really should check out those Tigers. They offer a lot of bike for the money. And that brings me back to the Multistrada V4. I think if you want the best overall road going bike in the group for, for highway performance, for, you know, if you're gonna go on a track, do a lot of twisty roads, if you're maybe coming from more of a sporty background, it's going to be super, super hard to beat this Multistrada. Also, if this is the most ref, uh, premium, the most technologically advanced bike in the group, I think it has the highest quality feeling, maybe tied with the BMW in this group. So again, these are all things to consider, but they're all incredible, incredible motorcycles, and they're all expensive, of course. All right, so what are the pros and cons to the Multistrada V4S? So a lot of this is probably apparent by now, but let me run through these again to summarize. So for me, the pros, the way, the way I see it are, are the pros on this bike. Uh, number one, the engine and the power. The power is simply addictive, it's smooth, it sounds good. It gives you that adrenaline rush you expect out of a premium high-end, high-powered motorcycle. And I really like how they've engineered the engine with those longer service intervals, but you still get all that amazing power. It's really, a great motorcycle engine. The next thing I really love about this bike is the comfort. It's one of the most comfortable bikes you can buy in today's uh, world. It truly is comfortable to ride all day. That's always been true with the Multistradas, but I think with this V4, they've really even improved that further. The technology, the technology is a huge pro in my opinion on this bike. Now you could fall into two camps on this. If you're somebody who doesn't want that or doesn't need that, then maybe don't look at this bike and you're probably not looking at it anyway because this bike is super premium, super expensive. And those kinds of buyers tend to want some of these uh, technological features either for bragging rights or because they're actually gonna legitimately use them in everyday real life. In my opinion, the technology that this bike has, the adaptive cruise control, the ability to follow traffic, um, the blind spot monitors, the you know self-leveling suspension, all those sorts of things, they really add to the bike's usefulness, the bike's safety, make it more comfortable to ride all day, less fatiguing, and I think have genuine value. Also, it bears mentioning that even though this is one of Ducati's first bikes and one of the first motorcycles in the world, if not the first, to have front and rear radar, the execution is from what I can tell, nearly flawless. The way that they partnered with Bosch to implement the system, it works brilliantly. There's no glitches in the adaptive radar system that I could find, and it's, I'm, I'm just shocked how well executed it is for being such a new product. The next pro for me is the styling. I think this bike looks really, really good, especially from the front, but that's just obviously a subjective thing. The next pro for me is the overall build quality. <laughs> Everything on this bike, I mean, Ducati likes to tout the fact that, you know, their bikes are sort of handmade in Italy. Um, and it, it, it shows, I mean, everything feels super premium. It feels like good metal, good quality. Like uh, it just feels luxurious. Uh, unlike some other brands we won't name, <coughs> KTM. So I really appreciate that. And I think the last pro is if you buy this bike, you pretty much know, or you, you kind of have this status or this in your mind that you have bought one of the most technologically advanced, fastest, most comfortable, safest, uh, and most premium motorcycles on sale today from any manufacturer. So what are the downsides to the Multistrada V4? Well, obviously the price. So I think that the bike is actually a good value if you consider everything you're getting, all the technology you're getting for this price. This bike comes in around one or $2,000 more than a BMW GS adventure model. So I don't think the pricing is too out of control, especially when you consider all the technology you can get on this, which you can't get on the BMW. Another couple downsides that we've talked about in the previous video and in this one, the engine does have a little bit of a shutter. If you open the throttle hard at low RPMs, below about 3,500 RPMs, but it's totally avoidable. You just don't use the engine in that way. You just keep the engine spinning at, at above 3,500 RPM or go easy on the throttle at the low RPMs, but it's not a significant drawback that most people are gonna notice. It's just something that we noticed in our testing. We've talked about the rear brake. The rear brake feels really mushy and soft, and I'm not sure why that is, but I wish Ducati would 
address that. The other potential downside of the bike, this kind of sounds like a weird one, is that if you buy this bike with all these options, uh, what do you get after this? What do you upgrade to? I mean, I don't know if that's a downside, but it's something that I thought of. Final thoughts on the Ducati Multistrada V4. I really feel that this is one of the best road going motorcycles in the world right now. And I don't think that's an exaggeration. And it makes sense if you consider the combination of practicality, comfort, engine performance, the premium level of fit and finish, the technology, the safety features, the chassis, the handling, the ability and the poise to uh, have great control and great fun and all sorts of riding conditions on and off road. It's very, very difficult for anybody to beat this motorcycle as an overall all around package. Now, with that being said, this bike comes at a price point and there are a few downsides that we've mentioned. But if you're that premium level buyer looking for a premium level motorcycle with all the gadgets, all the safety features, all the performance that you can buy, and you have the means to get something like this, then this bike should be at the very, very top of your shopping list. It's an incredible machine and I, it's nitpicking to find anything really that I don't like about it. I would love to have this motorcycle in my garage. I have a garage, I'm privileged to have a garage full of nice bikes already, and I really like my GS, but if I was buying a bike today, a premium and adventure touring bike today, I would, I would buy this. This bike is phenomenal. So I hope this video and the video I did comparing this bike with the GS, I hope they've both been useful and informative and educational and entertaining and all those things. Uh, if they have been, please consider supporting Big Rock Motor. There's ways to do that down in the description and the comments below. I really, really hope you've gotten something out of this. It's been an absolute privilege and pleasure to test this motorcycle, and I don't want to give it back to Ducati. I love this thing. Thank you so much for watching. Please ride safe, and I'll see you out there.